if you need a tool that you can move away from your cloud storage on your phone or anything like that and you want to share and have way more control over your files and you can also have way more storage options for a way more affordable price over the long term and not pay subscription model. I have a video for you today. This is for creators. This is for anybody who just really wants to move away from iCloud storage or anything like that. Um, amongst way more other things that you could utilize this for than just that. But stay tuned. And we're going to be going over that here today. A budget option for sure. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Paul. I'm running a channel that inspires other creators that your future is whatever you make it. I do the figure reviews and tutorials. And today I am going over the Asus Store Drive Store 2 Lite. And this thing has surprised me. Uh, now, let me give you a pre word here that Asus Store kindly sent this unit out to me for review after I reached out to them. Um, I had to buy all the drives myself, so they literally just sent me the unit itself and I went out and I was able to acquire some drives. Asus Store will not see this video, have any say in this video. This is literally just my opinion on this unit. And um, I was luckily to have some other larger creators that told me about this Asus Store brand and suggested that I take a look at them. So what I do, I reached out to them to see if there's any units they had available for review because I think this is a very useful tool for content creators and non-content creators out there. What are you gonna find first of all inside the box when you open this thing? You're gonna find the drive store unit itself, you're gonna find a power adapter, an ethernet cable, and of course, all the paperwork and guides that we all really read through thoroughly, right? Yeah. So my first impressions of this unit is, wow, it's very compact and it's a lot lighter than I thought it was gonna be. It has like a simple, elegant design to the front. There's nothing super fancy, but I like the texture and the black flat matte look. No easy to pull out bays, which is a little bit downside compared to some other units that you see out there. However, this one is definitely budget friendly and I can forgive that. I can't really complain about not being able to access and pull up the drives. Plus, I mean, how often are you or myself actually gonna pull the drives out of the unit. The um, unit did not include hard drives like I had mentioned earlier, but I was lucky enough to have a friend that works in IT. He provided me with two two terabyte drives by Western Digital, their enterprise drives. They typically are a little bit louder than other drives, but uh, I found that the drives were you know not super duper loud and in my room where I have a ceiling fan going and other things, I never even really heard them. So it's still fairly quiet for what it is. I can only imagine what it, how quiet it would be with other normal drives that are not enterprise quality level. The drive store light has a Realtek quad core 1.7 gigahertz processor in it with one gigabyte of DDR4 RAM. And to be completely honest with you, I didn't think it would be enough, but this unit has completely surprised me. I haven't found that it limited me on anything that I needed to do with it for the basic backup storage and cloud needs. And I even have heard of people using these for Plex servers and they've had no issue streaming content. The big thing for that is making sure you get big enough drives for whatever you're needing it for. It has a one gigabit ethernet port, which the read and write speed is 113 megabytes per second with the RAID 1 setup. Between my slow internet speeds and the lacking of the speed of the ethernet port, it isn't gonna be like super speedy, but it gets the job done for backup and for my needs. This is a budget unit, and honestly, my home Wi-Fi couldn't handle anything a lot faster than this because I would have to upgrade my wireless network. I just gotta remember the limitations and I can't edit off this unit. But I didn't buy it with the intent to edit off, I bought it with the intent to back up stuff. This unit has a max capacity of 22 terabytes per drive. So you could have a total of storage if you had two 22 terabyte drives of 44 terabytes, which is quite a lot of space. So even though it is a two bay, 22 terabytes is a quite a bit a lot. Those drives would probably be really expensive. Setting up the unit was very straightforward. It was easy. It had a great tool-free design, which I still prefer to use a screwdriver, so I did. When I plugged it into my network, I used the one-click setup option. Even though I do have a little bit of a background in IT, I could have gone in and done more manual installation. I really wanted to see just how easy it was to plug in. And to my surprise, that one-click setup was shockingly 
really good. I feel like the average person that doesn't even know anything about NAS is, could just kind of click through and it's kind of self-explanatory for what it is. Just make sure you remember what your admin username and password you set up was because you're going to need to know that later. For some reason, when I was just setting mine up, it kept asking me for the registration information and for I was thinking it was like my email address that I kept creating, but dummy me, it was my admin password and when I actually used that, then I was actually able to log in. I was confused why I couldn't log into the ADM. It's because I wasn't using the right thing. I even emailed support for this and I feel like a dumb dumb. I was shocked how easy it was set up and I think this is a really great system for new beginners for, to the NAS world. It's easy, it's perfect, it, there's so many things once you get this up and running to explore between apps, Plex server stuff. I mean, the, the possibilities are endless and this thing ran really well, like I said, for how underpowered it reads on paper. For the average person, I don't think it's gonna be an issue. It wasn't an issue for me. The biggest issue for me is I don't think two terabytes is nearly enough. I'm, I'm gonna have to get new drives in the future, but hey, the unit itself, is great. I configured this thing with a RAID 1 setup, so pretty much one to one copy of the hard drives. In case anything needs to be replaced, anything dies, I have the backups. I just open the thing up, slide the hard drive out, replace it, boom, the, the system does its, uh, the copy of itself again, and we're, you're back up and running again. It's, it's that easy with RAID 1. Um, and the first thing I did was I ran a Time Machine backup of my machine, my Mac. And it did take an extremely long time because my wireless network is not super fast and uh, slower of port. But I will say that it's, it took about 10 hours and I just left my computer on overnight and let it do its thing and woke up the next morning and it was fine, it worked for me. The other thing I do is I back up my whole phone. I backed up all my photos off my external hard drives that I have for family stuff. I pretty much backed up all the data that I would have acquired right now that would be taking up cloud storage. I was even able to sync my Dropbox and Google Drive to my unit itself so that I can move away from those in the future. And that's what I use for client work and sending stuff out. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and move towards using my own personal NAS for this. There are, there are a number of features that I just were blown up way by, and these are my favorite features that I've used so far on the unit. And the first one has to be the AI Photo 3 app for your smartphone. It's both for Apple and Android, and it just, you open up your phone, you can tell it to sync, you can set it to auto sync when you take pictures, it automatically syncs it up to your cloud. You That way you know everything is on your NAS, and it's almost like you don't even need to worry about having iTunes or any of the other cloud storages that you have to pay for monthly subscriptions to back up your devices. I'd much rather have my own, have my own security, have my own privacy, and it's all there whenever I need it, and I have full access to it and full control over my own data. And it's a lot cheaper if you have this over a number of years than paying that subscription fee every single month. I've been extremely happy with this. The app is very intuitive, very easy to use. The one thing you do need to make sure you do is go into the Easy Sync Manager and turn that on so that you can actually access your NAS off network and not just when you're on the network. The AI Master app is also another phone app brilliant features I never expected to have on such an affordable NAS. Like you're spending $175 for the NAS itself and it has all these features, all these app designs in it, which is great. I can access it from my phone. I can manage it from my phone and I can even log into my computer and do it too. But the ability to do it on your phone, is just super convenient and super easy. I love all these little extras that you don't necessarily expect to get out of these budgetary options. The file explorer inside the ADM, super easy to assign users and set permissions. And one of the really favorite features that I found and I'm gonna be using for my client work is this ability to create a shared folder, right click on it and you can share it with somebody and give them a date of expiration. So you can say, I only want this person to have access to this, to this folder until this date and then their access goes away or you can say never expire or whatever and then you can create a QR code and send it to that person, scan the QR code and boom, it takes them to their files. That is just so nifty, so futuristic and it makes you look so professional. That's a really cool feature and I'm gonna be using that from now on instead of sending people a Google Drive link or a Dropbox link and then it's all on my own server and I can manage it and then remove any of those accesses once I no longer see it fit or it's needed. I really like the Data Sync app as well. The Data Sync app, you can add, add in your logins for Google Drive, Dropbox, 
Microsoft 365, all those that have other data syncing or cloud storage options, and it'll actually pull all your data off it and store it on your NAS. It'll sync back and forth if you really want to. But for me, I just set it up to pull all my data off so that I can fully move over to my NAS system and be on it for the future. Overall, there's a ton of options in their uh, App Central. So if you have security cameras, there's the Plex video servers and stuff. The sky is really the limits on what you can find in there and set up for your needs. I'm not even, I'm just touching the surface with this thing and using it for basic data backup, but you could do it so much more. And they even have really great online video tutorials in the ADM, so you want to find some online help, you can search for that, see how to do certain things. Plus, I mean, there's tons of videos on YouTube. And if there's anything specifically that you'd like to see or do, feel free to email me. Maybe I can do a video on that for you and, and show you how to possibly do that. Never even knew about AU Store until a few other creators told me about it. And I'm super happy that I was able to reach out to AU Store and then send me this demo unit to check out and review for you guys and let you know about it. Because honestly, what a great option it is for the price. I mean, if any of you were in IT and know to how much it costs just to build your own server on top of having the knowledge in order to build it and put the OS on it and everything like that, where this has everything all secluded into one little box, literally a tiny little box. It's, it's a great little option. It fits my needs and it's, I'm really excited to expand the memory and really build out my own cloud-based storage at home. So if you like this video, do hit that like button, subscribe for more videos, and you guys know that I will see you in the future.